Hey guys, Ivor here, and we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates. We are one day out of Ampro Cup Spain, and we got a new physique update from William Bonacid. One day out, he's showing off his back, and as you can see, he dried out even more. He looks even harder now than he did at three days out. He definitely does look harder, a lot harder now. Now, if you look at his back again, it's it's. I think it's gonna be the best back on that stage the best back double and probably the best back lat spread even though like he's a little bit shorter and doesn't have the widest shoulders and the smallest waist the weak taper is not gonna be the best but the thickness and the density and the details of the back are gonna be the best in my opinion on that stage but even though they say shows are won from the back and you know we saw that with Derek Lunsford recently and we've seen it many other times back does play a really big role but can you really win if your back is the best but you look like this from the front William Bonac definitely doesn't look as good from the front as he does from the back or as he looked from the front back in the day now he is one day out here and I don't think he's gonna get much fuller from this point. So I don't think this is a flatness issue. I think this is simply, you know, he lost some muscle. He, he lost some of that fullness, the density that he had once with age. And by the way, in my previous video, I made a mistake. He's not 45, he's actually 42. But still, you know, that's, that's, that's a lot still for an athlete, for a bodybuilder. From the front, once again, as you can see, yeah, it's not what it used to be, and it's not what we see from the from behind and from the sides. From the sides, it's also very good, but from the front, yeah, no. I see a lot of people actually have William Bonac, you know, as their front runner. So I thought maybe I should make a video about whether he actually can win the show. Like a question mark: Can he win the Emperor Cup Spain? But in my opinion, right now, it's a silly question. I don't think he can do it. No, no way. The previous video that I showed you guys at three days out, we saw what he looks like from the front, from the sides, but I cut out the video, the part where he was showing his back, so we're gonna check it out here once again. We only saw the quarter turns, and in the quarter turns, even from the back, you can see some, uh, some asymmetry, some balance issues, conditioning once again, it's spot on, it's the best peak you can ask for, I mean, his coach, Stefan Kinzel, did the best job he could do, but, you know, sometimes, for some guys, it's too late, you can't do much, you can't revive their physiques to make them look like they looked when they were young, when they were fresh, when they were at their best, like I said, the back, in the back double, like the glutes are shredded, the hamstrings are peeled, the back, it looks good, in the back lats, but you can see that asymmetry that I spoke about. The right lat looks significantly bigger than the left one. He's managing to hide it in the back double somewhat, but in the back lat spread, I mean, here he's kind of hitting the angle, trying to hide it also from the camera, but he won't be able to hide it from the judges. Obviously, one of his lats melted, it, it disappeared. It happens, it happens. Lats are also one of the body parts that go away amongst the first body parts to go away when you age so yeah you can see it here again conditioning great glutes hamstrings lower back he's peeled he's dialed in completely but it's not gonna be enough even his side poses which are also very good like the side tricep and the side chest as well are not gonna help him that much the details in the quads are gone the fullness in the chest in the arms in the shoulders it's not there check it out, it's definitely not the way it used to be, and because of that, his waist looks bigger, his midsection is taking more space, uh, like, proportionally, again, quads, not detailed, yeah, you can definitely see the signs of aging, no, no, this guy has no chance of winning the Emperor Cup Spain, but he could place top three, which would be an amazing success, and there is another thing that's very interesting, I have no idea what the hell this even is. In this update, he's wearing quite long trunks, so you can't see his upper glutes, but check them out from this angle filmed by Urs Kalicinski. What is that lump on, on Bonek's glutes? Like, is that a bad injection? Is it simply his abductor popping out like crazy, naturally? 
Or is it something else? Something like Big Ramy used to have in his upper glutes, which till this day we have no idea what that was, and as far as William Bonac, I have no idea. Maybe a bad injection, obviously here he's wearing much smaller trunks and his glutes are showing. Maybe it's just a bad angle of the camera and something is warping the, the, the video and it's making his glute look like this, but I don't know. I don't think it's that. It's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. I mean, I don't know if it's going to look like that on the stage, in the poses, from the back. Is that thing going to be visible? What the hell even is it? Is it just the glutes? They are just this big and they look normally like this from the side? I don't know. I don't think so. It looks like a huge pimple or something like that. Very weird. Very weird. Whatever you guys think. If you have any explanations, tell us down below in the comment section. Now let's talk about bodybuilders who actually might win this show. Behru Stabani just posted a physique update. I think this is also at one day out. Obviously, the lighting is very transparent, it's just daylighting. You can't really create some crazy illusion without superficial lighting, so it is what it is. Like here, you can see exactly what his condition is looking like, and he looks shredded, man. He looks in shape, but fuller. I would say bigger than usual. His coach is Milos Sharchev, and I didn't ask Milos about this, but it feels like they're kind of playing a little bit more on the fullness card. I mean, he's gonna be shredded, obviously, but I think he's gonna be bigger and fuller than last year at the Romania Pro. But really, the big question with Behruz is how much are his quads improved? And I think they are improved. I think they are improved reasonably. One off season is not enough to change a weak point to a strong point. So his quads are still probably going to be his weakness, but it seems like they are not going to be that much of a flaw this year. I think he improved them significantly. Potentially enough for them to not stand out as a weak point. Nobody is perfect, even on that level. People have flaws. Mikhail Krizia has flaws. Like his glutes are definitely not going to be the biggest on that stage. Also, his posing is probably not going to be the best, but in the end, it's going to be who has the least amount of flaws. In my opinion, it's going to be Krizio, but I think this guy, Behrus Tabani, is going to push Krizio and potentially even beat him. I'm not sure which one of these guys is going to win. I do think it's going to be Krizio, but I'm not sure. From behind, though, I think he's beating Krizio. I think he's got him in this one. In the back double, especially. Probably last spread as well. I mean, Krizio also has a good back, I'm not saying his back is weak, but it's a little bit shallow, and uh, Bakru's back is amazing, and also crazy symmetrical and really well shaped. Look at the freaking symmetry here, and the lat development, and the size of the waist, compared to the shoulders, also the conditioning of the glutes and the hamstrings, like this is gonna be really, really tough to beat, even for William Bonnick, for that matter. So, I don't know, I don't know, I mean, if, if Behruz's legs are close to Krizio's, then, I don't know, it actually could be this guy that takes the win. You guys tell me down below, do you think there is a possibility of this guy winning the show? But I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty freaking sure that these two guys are gonna be the top two, maybe Behruz actually ends up winning. But even if he does, he never made it to the US so far, he never got his visa, hopefully something will change in the future, this guy needs to go to the Mr. Olympia, he is definitely the top 10 Mr. Olympia material, Krizo is 7th in the world right now, so it's not gonna be easy to beat him, but if he continues competing in Europe, he's gonna win a show, he's gonna qualify for the Mr. Olympia, no doubt, he needs to go over there, look at his talent man, this is just crazy, this is another hottie, a new hottie, not on the level of Hadi yet, but in a couple of years, he might even surpass him. I see the potential. It's only the quads that need the work, really. Everything else is pretty much spot on. Small waist also, really good abs, really aesthetic physique, good conditioning always, great fullness, a lot of size, arms, chest, back, shoulders, uh, conditioning in the lower body from behind, like glutes and hamstrings, symmetry, proportion, everything is pretty much there. Just a little bit better quads, and that's it. But I think they definitely improved a lot. Maybe this year, even, they're not gonna be that noticeable. But we'll see, it's gonna be definitely a very interesting battle.
All right, next up, we got Regan Grimes, and we got, finally, we got a transparent post from him. This is actually him right now. Now, recently, he posted a couple of uh, photos in which he looked super shredded, and I don't even know how I fell for it. I mean, he, he showed up recently at the Jay Cutler podcast, in which he definitely looked uh, chubby. People were saying that he looks like a strongman, and I was commenting on it, and then I fell for a, for a photo that was obviously from prep. However, finally, he posted a current, recent physique update. He is deep into his offseason right now. He is probably going to compete next year, later next year, in 2025, as he says. Now, in the caption here, he says, you can't sculpt a pebble, so we are out here trying to get thick, just shy of 300 pounds. So he definitely looks bulked up. It looks like he's eating. He's definitely trying to get bigger. Is 300 pounds enough for Egan Grimes? No, no. For a guy of his height, he's about Samson's height. He needs to be at least 330. And Samson is 330 with better conditioning than Regan. So if Regan wants to be on that level, on the level of Samson you know, winning the Arnold Classics and placing in top three at the Mr. Olympia, he can do it with his structure. But for him, for his frame, for his height, his size, he just needs to be bigger. Maybe not necessarily as big as Samson, as heavy as Samson. Maybe his structure is even a little bit better. Maybe his joints are smaller, so he can get away with less muscle. But yeah, I would still say he needs another 20 to 30 pounds of muscle. Maybe, maybe like, I mean, Samson is 330, but like he's conditioned, more conditioned than Riga now. Not a lot more, but I would say he's definitely sharper. So if this is the conditioning Riga is going to maintain in the offseason, then, you know, 350 would actually sound reasonable. But I don't know what he's on right now. If he's on a little stuff, then he takes a lot more in prep and then he doesn't lose that much weight. But last time he was 270 at Italy and Spain and uh, he was not in the best condition for the Mr. Olympia. He was like 260, a little bit more than that, I think. But he was definitely more conditioned. So, yeah, I mean, he definitely needs more muscle, you know, to be on that level, to be one of the top guys, to potentially win the Mr. Olympia, like Samson Dauda, for example. But he's on the right way. He's obviously taking some time uh, to focus on the offseason. The main reason for that is, I think, the fact that he's becoming a father, so he wants to focus on that and not focus on competing too much. Uh, is he gonna really try and progress in the meantime, or he's gonna just, you know, rest up, let his body freshen up, and then start the prep fresh, but not improved significantly? I don't know. I think it's gonna be like that. I don't think he's gonna improve at those 20, 30 pounds in this offseason, which I think he could. If you really focused, if you really tried 100% in the offseason, I think he could do that. But even if he doesn't, I think he's going to make progress the way he was making it all these years. You know, 5 to 10 pounds in a year. Still, it's going to be an improvement. But is he going to be ready next year to be one of the top guys at this pace? No. No, I don't think so. He needs to up his game if he wants it to happen in, in a couple of years. And finally, we got a new, very, very recent physique update from Krijo. So he says tomorrow on stage, and I'm guessing the photo is from right now, at one day out. Does it look like it? Absolutely. It most certainly does. The conditioning is on. It's good. It's not a crazy level of conditioning, which is a good thing, actually. At the Mr. Olympia, he was, in my opinion, a little bit too dry. You know, too conditioned. And I think it cost him a couple of places. If he was actually a little bit fuller, bigger, with less conditioning, maybe he would have beaten Hunter Labrada or Brandon Curry even, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. But he definitely overdid the conditioning a little bit. Uh, he definitely got a little bit smaller. He wasn't at his usual size, his usual fullness. He kind of dieted away some of the muscle. So I think he learned on his mistake, and it seems like he's not going to repeat it this year at the Emperor Cup Spain, and I think he's gonna win this show again, like I said, I think it's pretty clear, I mean, Bechruz is gonna be also really dangerous, so I don't know, I don't know, but if I was a batting man, I would put my money on Krish, look at him right here, look at the quad separation, look at how deep his separation, his quads are, 
and like the adductors as well, the dryness of the adductors. His legs overall look really dry, really deeply separated. He has that quality of the muscle that I was talking about, the clean look. It's rare these days, guys, to have people with this kind of deep separation. You know, especially at that level, at that size of open bodybuilding. Almost nobody has this kind of clean look. You see this in classic, but in open, not so much. My assumption is that it's because of insulin and GH. It helps you grow a lot faster, but you don't have the same quality after that. You just look a little bit too watery, usually. So, I don't think Krizia did any of that. I think his muscle is absolutely pure, real, right? You can especially see it in the shoulders. Like, how many of the guys today have shoulders this separated, this, this lean, this dry? It's, it's really rare to see. Even the arms, which are, by the way, humongous... And the chest, also you can see the separation, the traps. You see that crazy quality that you don't see very often these days. Sure, he has flaws, he's not perfect, but I really appreciate this clean look that he brings. Plus the size, you know, the height and the size and the freaking arms. Yeah, it's one of my favorite physiques of today, honestly. Whatever you guys think, who's gonna win tomorrow, who's gonna place where, whatever is on your mind, guys, please comment down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up for more content like this, guys. Subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.